Welcome to the Real Life Stories Testimony Books channel. I'm Norm Rasmussen, the, the ministry I'm a part of, of Precious Testimonies Evangelistic Ministries, is giving exposure to these Real Life Story Testimony Books. And this particular book, the VET edition, is getting uh, extra coverage because it is being used mightily in veterans organizations and uh, we're just alerting people that they can get a case of these books and take it down to their local uh, veterans organization or if you live in a larger city there may be more than one location veterans location where you can place copies of this book uh, on on their facility so that vets can find them it is a book of hope um, to pass along hope to others. In it is 27 uh, different stories of veterans and how they had exposure to the military and now what God means to them. And so uh, you can order a case of these books um, by clicking on the link below. Let's now hear a chapter out of this treasured vet edition. Chapter 27 is titled, I Was Shot. I was born in Puerto Rico in 1947. I lived in a small home with my mom and dad until I was around four years old. It was volatile between them and my father was an alcoholic. I ended up being sent to live in another home with my uncle's aunt and grandfather for about a year to escape my dysfunctional household. I spent a lot of time outside playing with the chickens, climbing trees, and eating the fruits from them. I kept myself busy while everyone was at work. At around the age of five, my mother relocated to Brooklyn, New York. She sent for me to come and live with her. When I arrived, I recall my mom taking me to the hospital, but never mentioning why. What sticks out to me about that trip was seeing my sick father in the hospital bed. It was the last time I ever saw or heard from him. A year later, I was living with my mom and she was involved in an abusive relationship. Thankfully, that relationship was short-lived and only lasted several months. After she left that relationship, she found someone else who eventually became my stepfather. Together, they had four children plus the three from her previous marriage, including me. We grew up in many uh, different places in New York, my parents doing the best they could with what they had. Times were hard and we were always moving. We moved at least 10 times. Growing up, I was the one taking care of my younger siblings. On the weekends, my parents, friends, and relatives would come over to drink and play dominoes. I was responsible for making sure the children behaved and were okay, being a child myself. At age 19, I finished high school. I was young and didn't have direction in my life. I felt lost and alone with no purpose. I would walk miles, even in the rain, to visit friends and try to escape the loneliness. In 1967, I was drafted into the Army. I ended up enlisting in the Marines instead. I spent two months of boot camp at Paris Island, South Carolina. From there I went to Okinawa, Japan for about three months. I would be tasked to police the entrance gate. During a policing shift, I decided to go across the street to a barbershop to get a haircut. 
My sergeant caught me and gave me a good old-fashioned yelling. He told me to get back to base immediately. I didn't get writ I didn't get written up for that one or have any other severe consequences, though it could have ended differently. I was learning to become a disciplined soldier. I would send all of my money to my mom. So on my off days, I would go out with my friends and they would treat me. After my time in Okinawa, I was sent to Vietnam, where I ended up being wounded twice. I remember getting to Vietnam with two other soldiers. That was my first introduction to death. It was all around me. I recall asking God, please get me out of this alive. Give me a home and a family and I will serve you all the days of my life. It wasn't long before I was shot. God did save me that day. But I continued to live in a worldly way until after the birth of my first son. That is when I got serious about God and committed my life to Jesus. From there, we were sent to the unit. We started patrolling the south side of Vietnam, which was heavily occupied territory. Going through Camp Carroll, a soldier was in front as we made our way through the brush, clearing the thick and heavy foliage with a machete. Clearing the way, we got about 50 yards close to the enemy line and they opened fire. The soldier in front ended up taking the majority of the enemy fire. At the same time, a grenade exploded by us. He ended up flying back on me. My hand was holding my rifle over my chest, over my heart. A bullet hit my hand and ricocheted off. I was shot. The impact of the grenade caused gravel and rocks to forcefully hit my face. I thought I did some serious damage to my face, so I rushed to find us some cover. I was unable to locate any cover, and my fellow soldier I was with was getting shot at. I yelled for the medics, and two arrived. I told the medic, helping me to assist my fellow soldier instead, as he was more severely wounded from the grenade hit and fire. The medic continued to bandage me up. I later found out the other soldier had not made it. After being bandaged, the medic asked me if I wanted to see a fellow soldier who I would often hang out with during leisure time as well as fighting battles together. In fact, I recall one night before patrolling, a chaplain approached us when we were hanging together and invited us to a get-together. I asked my friend if he wanted to go to a service that night. He replied by saying that if we didn't have any faith in his parents, how could we have, how could, I'm sorry. He replied by saying that if he didn't have any faith in his parents, how could he have faith in God? He told me to go without him, so I went. The very next day, I was sitting here getting bandaged by the medic. Then he asked, would you like to see him? He's dead. I felt bad knowing he died without believing in God. That same night, I departed on a chopper with the wounded soldiers to Guam. I was sent to the hospital until I recovered from my injuries. Then I was sent back to the war zone. After recovering, I was sent back to Okinawa to prepare for another mission in Vietnam. After being in Vietnam a while, I was sent on another patrol. During this patrol, we were in an open field with wheat and grass everywhere. I remember hearing about one of our soldiers in an open field 
similar to where we were getting shot and killed. I told my squad to get down and kneel during our patrol in the open field. I then knelt down on a gravel mine. It exploded and wounded my knee. I ended up going to the hospital with a fractured kneecap. While lying in the hospital, I spotted a fellow soldier that was in my unit the day I was taken out. I asked him why he was in the hospital and how the unit was. He replied that the day I was taken to the hospital, that evening, the enemy ambushed our company and killed everybody. He was the only one who made it out. Fifty-five years later, I live in a wooden, I'm sorry, 55 years later, I was, uh, I live in a wonderful home with my beautiful wife. I have four children and 10 grandchildren. Every day, I thank God he answered my request and continues to show me his love and faithfulness. This is the story of Frank. Well, I hope this testimony has blessed folks in some special way. Um, sure has blessed me. I uh, just uh, again want to say if you maybe didn't hear the beginning of this um, video clip, uh, I'm Norm Rasmussen and I'm the overseer of the Precious Testimonies Evangelistic Ministries, have been for years and we are helping distribute these real life story testimony books out into the highways and byways. In this particular vet edition, we are uh, placing copies in veteran organizations in our area. And we are encouraging people to do the same. We are encouraging people to get a case of these books and uh, take them into a local veterans organization in your community where vets uh, can find them. And so uh, be strongly encouraged to do that. Again, you can drop down to the description section and there's a link there where you can find how to get a case of these books. Um, we also want to just mention that donations help us do this. Um, we would not be able to do this without the generous gifts of people helping us pay for vehicle maintenance, gasoline especially. And uh, so uh, if you are able to send uh, the Precious Testimonies Ministry a donation to help us continue distributing um, this vet book and other testimony books, um, you can click on a support link in the description section below. Thanks so much for visiting this channel and we pray that you would be moved to share it uh, with others. And with that, God bless you. Until next time.